Hey guys, Pat Kelly here of Mad River Outfitters. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying the carbonator. The, uh, the hook what we're going to start out with today is the Daiichi 1650 size 4. Really stout hook. It's a short shank, wide gap, straight eyed hook. Um, just kind of the hook that I've settled on. There's other hooks you can use. This one does a really nice job. We're going to be tying this fly inverted, so it has kind of a nice straight level base to it, so it allows the fly to, to kind of ride hook up and not tip over, which is kind of nice. Um, anyways, the thread, I'm using a 140 denier UTC. Uh, color is fluorescent orange. Just going to kind of start by laying a thread base uh, all the way down the hook and then kind of back up towards the eye. We're going to start by just getting our bead chain, which is a, a large, bead, large bead chain in, uh, in black. We're gonna kind of get that affixed to the hook here with just some figure eight wraps to kind of secure that in its place there. I like to use a little drop of, uh, of some Zappa Gap just to really anchor these guys in place. I'll put that on the top and the bottom. A lot of times when you're carp fishing, this fly is just constantly banging around on the bottom and rocks. So that little bit of super glue in there just helps keep those eyes locked in place so they're not spinning around on you. Uh, once that super glue is on there, just go ahead and take a few posting wraps underneath the base of the eyes and then bring your thread all the way back to just behind where the barb is. At this point, we're going to tie in our rabbit strip tail. This is a... Uh, a crawfish orange color. This is just the standard cut too, it's not cross cut. Go ahead and you want to take about an inch of the hide and an uh, inch of the hide's worth of hair. Cut that off, that's going to be your tail. Go ahead and just kind of make a pinch wrap, trap that material right on top of the hook shank, and then go ahead and just walk your thread. Securing the rabbit, you're gonna go down about halfway into the, uh, the bend of the hook. By going halfway down into the bend there like that, when this fly is inverted and standing up on the, uh, on the bottom of the river, it's gonna put that, that rabbit fur and kind of position it kind of straight up and down like this so it kind of looks like a crayfish that's kind of postured up sitting on the bottom. I'm going to use just a few strands of root beer crystal flash. I think I have three strands here and what I like to do is I'll just kind of double them around the thread there. Take that right up on top and again just kind of walk that all the way back to just where your thread stops there where your tail's locked in. I'll go in here and I'll just cut this crystal flash about a half an inch or so longer than the rabbit strip tail is just so it sticks out a little bit beyond the rabbit. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our medium mono eyes and we're going to lock these in just in front of the tying point for your rabbit. You can kind of butt your eyes up against the uh, against that tying point there just to make sure they don't slide around. Again, same as what you did with the bead chain, just a few figure eight wraps. No need to, uh, to super glue these. We don't want to melt that plastic. Uh, uh, we're going to move on to the, the dubbing here. This is a uh, product from Wapsie called Crawl Dub. It's a uh, really, really fishy, buggy dubbing. It's got real long, coarse fibers in it. I like to use this for a lot of my crabs, uh, shrimp patterns, crayfish patterns. It has a really nice kind of wiry, fishy look to it uh, when you dub it onto the hook. Stuff is kind of coarse, so when you are when you go to dub this on your thread, the best thing to remember is less is more. Uh, if you try to get too much of this on your thread uh, when you're trying to dub it, it becomes really, really, really tough to kind of get it to adhere to the thread. So I just do it in real small pieces and just do a little bit at a time. I also kind of like to wet my fingers a little bit too. That seems to help get these... Uh, fibers to stick to the thread. I don't like to use dubbing wax for this just because the dubbing wax tends to um, 
kind of mat the fibers together so that after you dub it, you don't have that real buggy kind of spiky look to the to the fly if you end up using dubbing wax. So go ahead and just work that all the way up the hook shank here. We're gonna come in and add a little bit more dubbing. What I like to do is I like to kind of figure eight, make figure eight wraps around the mono eyes with the dubbing here, just to kind of help fill out the body of the fly a little bit. This is a relatively sparse fly. Uh, there's not a whole lot of material in it, which is part of the reason why I like it. Uh, there's not a lot of weight to it. You can even, um, you can use medium bead chain eyes on this and it'll still sink really, really quickly because there's not a lot of uh, material going on here. Probably the main reason why I like this fly more than any other carp fly is that, again, it's so light, but it still sinks very quickly. So you can land this fly really closely to a fish without making a really loud splash. You can get in close to the, to the carp without alarming them and it still sinks and gets to the bottom really, really quick. All right, once we've dubbed and figurated around our mono eyes, um, at this point, I like to uh, add some rubber legs. These are a, uh, a barred pumpkin color. These are just silly legs, nothing fancy. I like to take two of those, try to take two of those. And what I'll do is I'll fold those in half, just like we did with the flashaboo. Typically, anytime I'm tying in rubber legs or a flash of any kind, I always like to fold it around the thread like this. Just kind of secures the uh, secures them in a little bit better, prevents them from being able to get pulled out um, when they're doubled over like that. It's, it's a lot more difficult to pull those rubber legs out doing it that way. Once that is locked in come in here and I'll cut these again just like I did with the flashaboo I'll kind of come back about a half an inch beyond where my rabbit ends and I'll just go ahead and cut those and then we will continue dubbing up the hook shank here what I like to do too is I like to take one or two wraps of this dubbing and come in right behind your rubber legs and what that does is kind of just props them up like that and allows them to kind of stand up when the fly's sitting on the bottom of the river and causes them to kind of swim around and move around a little bit more. You see how they're propped up like that? All you need, just one or two little wraps is all it takes. After you've done that, you can go ahead and finish dubbing all the way forward to just behind the bead chain eyes. We're going to leave a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to leave a little bit of room. We're going to palmer a, uh, a hen saddle for the collar. This is, again, this is a crawfish orange color. Now when I'm tying these in, I like to tie the feather in. With all feathers, you have, kind of have a cup side, and then you have a concave side and a convex side. I always like to take the, the cup side of the feather, and when I tie that in, I want that facing in towards the fly with the stem down. <clears throat> and by doing that, that will ensure that the feather does not twist on you. When you begin to wrap that feather around the hook shank, it'll keep it everything nice and straight so it doesn't get twisted on you. Another little tip, on this particular pattern, or on this fly that I have here in front of me, I'm going to leave fibers on both sides uh, of the feather here. One little thing you can do to, uh, to cause your fly to sink a little bit quicker with the same size bead chain is if you take one of those feathers and instead of leaving fibers on both sides, I always have a few of these flies tied up in my box um, where at this stage of the fly, instead of keeping the fibers on both sides, what I'll do is I'll actually strip the fibers away from one side of the feather before I palmer it or wrap it in. And that just makes that collar about half as dense. So it'll allow that fly to sink a little bit quicker. So just a little tip, mess around with it, see what works for you. Um, like I said, you can get the fly to sink a little bit quicker when you, uh, when you strip the fibers away from half of the stem here. I'm gonna leave this one nice and full. Get in here with your hackle pliers. And just, I like to take three wraps kind of 
kind of preening everything backwards there. And come in there with your thread. Tie that off. Kind of sweep everything backwards. Advance your thread forward here. At this point, we're just going to finish the fly off here, just kind of build up a nice, neat, tapered uh, thread head here, and you're done. Add a whip finish. As always, I'll typically finish all of my flies with just a little bit of uh, super glue here. You could also use any of the UV resins. That'll work really well, too. And again, just to kind of keep the durability of the fly up here by coating all these thread wraps and super glue, just is going to protect those from scraping around on rocks. And it's going to add to the durability of your fly. But there she is. That's the Carpenter. <clears throat> it's been a longtime favorite of everybody here at the shop been in our boxes for years and years and years. Uh, if you have any questions about how to tie this fly or the materials used to do it, give us a call at the shop. Uh, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.